We're going to begin with a bombshell report apparently revealing a sharp discrepancy between the president's public image and his private practices in business here in New York. The New York Times has obtained data from the tax records that he spent years trying to conceal. He shows, it shows rather, that he's paid almost no federal income taxes recently, just $750 in 2016 and 2017, and nothing at all in 10 out of the 15 years before that. The data also shows he claimed major losses on his businesses, even as he publicly said they were thriving, and that he may be under severe financial pressure in the next few years, with hundreds of millions in loans reportedly set to come due. The New York Times obtained tax return data extending over more than two decades and found Mr. Trump paid lower taxes using questionable tactics, including a $72.9 million refund that is currently being audited by the IRS. While claiming losses for many of his namesake businesses, including his golf courses, Mr. Trump has maintained a lavish lifestyle by taking tax deductions on what some people would consider personal expenses, including housing, aircraft, and $70,000 in hairstyling for television appearances. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the funniest pieces of information in this bombshell report, $70,000 for hair and styling. But I guess if you're rich, you can basically deduct anything. But the New York Times on a Sunday afternoon, just dropping bombs everywhere. Finally, some media organizations have gotten a hold of not the complete picture, but a lot of the picture of Donald Trump's tax returns. They have been elusive for many years because Trump just keeps filibustering and will not release them, even though every past president for in recent history has done so. The report also showed that during his presidency, he made around $73 million uh, from foreign deals, which is definitely unconstitutional, but there's so many things that he does that are illegal that it, it, it overwhelms people and we're not able to actually go after him because everything is so brazen, everything is so blatant all the time. Other journalists did some deeper dives into these figures showing that he has hundreds of millions of dollars in loans that he has personally guaranteed that are about to come due. Forbes reporter Dan Alexander shows that Trump owes $100 million at Trump Tower and hasn't paid any of the principal. He owes $139 million uh, at, at 40 Wall Street, which comes due in five years. And when Alexander totals up all the other properties, the total rounds out to around $1.1 billion. I think neoliberals corporate Democrats are going to feel tempted to weaponize this in the same way they did in the 2016 election. Look, he's not as rich as he says he is. <laughs> there are actually rich people like us who uh, did it the right way by cheating legally. He's probably cheating illegally, right? No, no, no. That's not the right, right way to go about this. The right way to go is he said he would drain the swamp. He's paid $750 in taxes in the in two years, 2016, 2017, I believe. No, he's cheating the system. He is the swamp. He's the one who's a part of the rigged system and we're trying to fix it. It makes it a little bit harder when Biden is the nominee, but it's easier than Hillary because Hillary was a more uh, solid picture of corruption than Joe Biden is, who is less corrupt than Hillary, but is still corrupt in his own right. He is cheating the system, Donald Trump, to pay his taxes. That needs to be the narrative. His family is too, in more ways than the ones that I just laid out. The report is really extremely thorough and fascinating. The Times' examination of financial records revealed a pattern of how the president was paid on various projects. Between 2010 and 2018, Mr. Trump wrote off some $26 million in unexplained consulting fees as a business expense across nearly all of his projects, according to the outlet. It's said that the president's eldest daughter, Ivanka Trump, had also previously appeared to have received fees under this designation, despite working as an employee of the Trump Organization. Ms. Trump had been an executive officer of the Trump companies that received profits from and paid the consulting fees for both projects, meaning she appears to have been treated as a consultant on the same hotel deals that she helped manage as part of her job at her father's business, the Times reported. 
So double dipping into payments there. The investigation revealed a scope of the family business, which includes hundreds of ventures that are reportedly nearly entirely controlled by the president. Although some of these businesses weren't lucrative, they still served a financial purpose, reducing his tax bill, according to the Times. For example, the reported losses from the operating businesses were so large that they often fully erased the licensing income, leaving the organization to claim that it earns no money and thus owes no taxes, the newspaper reported. Trump's merchandise has famously included Trump steaks and water bottles, among other items. The Times found his personal brand strategy to be the most successful part of the Trump business, earning $427.4 million in aggregate between 2004 and 2018. A significant chunk of that money came from The Apprentice. The series boosted Trump's profile while also bolstering his net income by $197.3 million, according to The Times. So it's incredibly clear, Donald Trump is a horrible business person who was only saved by his demeanor and his entertaining nature as the host of The Apprentice. And he's continued to be a horrible businessman even when he had that income from those television programs. And the corruption of having Ivanka serve dual roles so one, it can be written off, and two, she can get paid more. She's a consultant for herself? I mean, that's hilarious. So, so much corruption, so much double dealing, so much double dipping, so much screwing the American people over. And again, that needs to be the focus, not on his personal wealth. I understand that it's fun to like dunk on him and it gives you a sugar high, but the more poignant narrative is that he is the swamp. He is the one who is a part of the rig system that he said he was going to overhaul. The documents show it. He's a liar. He's cheating. He's the very lying politician that he said he was going to do away with. And that's what I think the Democrats need to run on here.